Until now, eye control has been reserved for those who have a proven understanding of cause and effect and who are demonstrating that they are ready for an AAC device or a computer to be used by their eyes. Very few users would gain access to an eye gaze system without a successful assessment, without proving they can use it on that day when they're trying it out for the first time. However, at Toby Technology, we believe that eye gaze is a skill like any other and that it needs to be taught in a constructive way. And that's why we've pulled together the Toby Technology Eye Gaze Learning Curve. Well, why eye control? Eye control is an access method like no other. Put simply, it's the fastest access method for anybody with a physical disability. Users can simply look at the object they want and it will select. The benefit of this is also that it has an extremely low cognitive load attached to it. Users can look and choose, and therefore they don't need to learn switch timing or the ability to move a joystick or a mouse to the requisite part of the screen. You look, it happens. Also, individuals can forget their position in front of the computer to some extent. Most other access methods require careful positioning of the switch, the keyboard, the mouse, the joystick. Eye gaze, wherever your head is, your eyes will always be there. The eye gaze user can take control of the computer but freely move from side to side, forwards and backwards. Finally, as an access method, eye gaze is the only one where the third party, the person that we're using a computer alongside or the person that we're talking to, can see what we're looking at. This prompts communication like no other access method. So all in all, we think that eye control, because it offers all of these things, is something that should actively be taught. Well, what is the learning curve? The learning curve is a step-by-step -step approach which takes us from the earliest understanding of cause and effect with a computer all the way through to a full, digitally inclusive, independent life. But up till now, calibration has been the most important thing. During that critical assessment stage, if somebody hasn't been able to calibrate, they haven't been able to access a system. And th at that point, professionals, assessors, have thought that this was not the access method for them. The eye gaze learning curve will start off with no calibration and will get success. From that early level of success, we will encourage the user to fix their eyes more carefully, teach eye pointing. That will then give us calib good calibrations, better calibrations, which then in turn leads to better c communication and computer access. If we think about it, that's exactly what we already do in schools, day centres and hospitals today. We work with switch-based games, touchscreen-based games. We do a lot of cause and effect exercises to teach the skills so that somebody can eventually take control of their computer or their AAC device with a switch, a mouse or a joystick. We don't do this for eye control. We jump straight in with grid-based communication. But actually, there's a whole host of learning pre-AAC that can be done to get better control and teach that access method. So the learning curve is a clear pathway to eye control success. We like to break it down as follows. Sensory eye control. The very first experiences in front of a computer screen. Imagine being taken into a darkened sensory room where we sit in front of a screen and the moment our eyes make contact with that screen, stars start to appear, bubbles will start to appear. We'll get a real immediate sense of cause and effect. That's what we like to call sensory eye tracking. Next, we'll look at eye tracking, early eye tracking. Early eye tracking is where we will sit in front of photos, videos, favourite television programmes, and the third party can watch where the cursor moves. This leads the user to understand that we can interpret their eye movements into conversation. We can react appropriately with them in front of a screen. This encourages the user to start actively moving their eyes around the screen so that we respond in a conversational way with them. Thirdly, we have exploration. Exploration is the critical part. This is time spent alone by the end user learning how to use their computer. At this stage, we might be looking at painting on a screen. We might be looking at playing Space Invaders, shoot 'em up games, just simply mouse, simple mouse over exercises that encourage the user to start actively moving their eyes around a screen. Stages four and five, we call turn taking and choosing. Choosing and turn-taking are critical steps that need to be learnt before we can get to communication. 
there's a whole host of software out there, a whole host of websites which will allow simple choices to be made. We can also use Toby's own software, Toby Communicator at this point, to introduce early choosing, early turn taking. Uh, but it is a critical step that we have to learn before we potentially move on to stage six, which is communication vocabularies. This is what Toby are already specialists at. We have a whole range of vocabularies that will allow people to start with situation-based symbol communication charts, games based on those situations, through to symbol-based grids or communication charts, and then going on to early stages of literacy, moving then on to full literacy. Once we have somebody at full literacy, the world is their oyster. We can then move on to stage seven, which is communication and computer control in the wider sense. At this stage, we will start to introduce things like email, Facebook, MSN or Skype, this is where the user realises that they can start to interact with the world, the world at large, uh, having a real impact on their care, having a real impact on their education. Uh, so that's what we call the eye gaze learning curve at Toby.